What's going on everybody? So in today's video, I got to talk about promises in JavaScript. A promise is an object, an object that manages asynchronous operations, such as querying a database, fetching a file, gathering resources, those you could consider asynchronous operations. They can take an indeterminate amount of time. You can wrap a promise object around some asynchronous code. The promise object promises to return a value. That promise object will be pending, then either that promise will be resolved if the task completed successfully, or rejected if it failed for some reason. Maybe the promise couldn't fetch that file. Resolved if it did. A promise is an object. We'll create a new promise object with new promise, then pass in a function. Usually you see this as an arrow function. There's two parameters, resolve and reject. Arrow, then do some asynchronous code. So in this demonstration, we're going to be doing some chores. If you live with your parents, maybe your mom asked you to do these chores, or with a roommate, these are the tasks you need to do, or your significant other wants you to do these tasks. Anyways, we have some chores to do. We have to walk the dog, clean the kitchen, and take out the trash. I'll create functions for each of these chores. First, we'll start by using callbacks. Then I'll demonstrate the use of promises and how they're helpful. So let's create a function to walk dog. To make this asynchronous, I'm going to add a set timeout function. This takes a callback and an amount of time in milliseconds to complete this code. Let's say walking the dog takes 1,500 milliseconds. What code would we like to perform? Let's write an arrow function to keep it simple. Parameters, arrow, do this. Let's console.log after completing this chore. You walk the dog. Okay, that'll be the first function. Let's create a function to clean the kitchen. Function clean kitchen. This will take a long time. 2,500 milliseconds, let's say. When we complete this task, we will print, you clean the kitchen. And a third function, take out trash. You take out the trash. Taking out the trash, it's really quick. It takes half a second, 500 milliseconds. If I need to do these chores in order, I would need to use some callbacks. After walking the dog, we will call a callback to clean kitchen. After we clean the kitchen, we will take out the trash. We need to modify these functions so that they accept some callbacks. After our code is complete, we will invoke the callback. Call the callback. So let's add that parameter to each of these functions. Now, if we want to call all these functions in order, we would have to start using callback hell, which we learned about in the last video. So first, I would like to walk the dog. I will call that function, pass in a callback, but we'll use an arrow function. Then we will clean the kitchen pass in a callback, I'll use an arrow function, take out trash, and we'll pass in a callback to do this when we complete all the chores. Console.log, you finished all the chores. Okay, let's see if this works. You walk the dog, you clean the kitchen, you take out the trash, you finished all the chores. If we have a lot of callbacks to work with, we'll end up going to callback hell. You don't want to go to callback hell. So what we'll use instead are promises. With all of this asynchronous code, we'll wrap it within a promise. By using a promise, we don't need callbacks. Instead of using callbacks, we'll use method chaining. We'll method chain our promises. Here's how. How we'll modify these functions is that at the end of each function, we will return an object. Return a new promise, return a new promise object, and follow this formula. We have two parameters, resolve and reject. Resolve, reject. Arrow, do this asynchronous code within an arrow function. Take all of the asynchronous code, cut it, place it within the promise. Our promise promises to return a value. It's either going to be resolved or rejected. We're going to modify this function. We don't need to work with callbacks anymore. We can get rid of those. Get rid of the parameter and the portion of the code where we called the callback. 
if we would like to display a message when the promise resolves, when it finishes successfully, we will instead call the resolve parameter. It's a function. This message is the value, the argument that we're passing in. After you finish walking the dog, here's your completion message when the promise resolves. Let's modify the rest of the functions so that they use promises. We will return a new promise, two parameters, resolve, reject. Arrow, do this asynchronous code. Let's cut our current asynchronous code, paste it, remove the callback parameter, we don't need it anymore, and we don't need to call the callback. When this promise resolves, pass along this message. You clean the kitchen. Let's do this with takeout trash. We will return a new promise. Two parameters, resolve, reject. Arrow, do this. Cut the asynchronous code paste it within the promise, remove the callback, and where we call the callback, when we resolve this promise, pass along this message. We no longer need to use callback hell. Instead, we're going to use method chaining. First, we're gonna walk the dog, clean the kitchen, and then take out the trash in that order. We will call the walk dog function. And then we're gonna method chain. Follow this with the then method, Walk the dog, then what, is what we're saying. The walk dog function does provide a value parameter, this message. We can use that message for something. That's going to be stored within value. That's going to be the parameter that's provided to us. Take the value. Let's print it. Console.log my value. So when I run this program, we should only be walking the dog. You walk the dog and nothing else. Looks like I misspelled resolve as resolves. There. After walking the dog, I would like to clean the kitchen. So I need to call that function next. Within our arrow function, we'll write more than one statement. We need to enclose this within a set of curly braces. Print our value, and then do this function. Return clean kitchen, and then call it. We'll add another then method. Then take the value provided by clean kitchen that will be this one take that value arrow console.log that value you walk the dog you clean the kitchen then we'll take out the trash at the end we'll add another statement to this then method we will return take out trash invoke this method then we will take the value provided to us when it resolves this value do this code console.log that value you walk the dog you clean the kitchen you take out the trash so after taking out the trash that's our last chore. Let's add another line of code. After displaying, you take out the trash. Let's console.log. You finished all the chores. You walk the dog. You clean the kitchen. You take out the trash. You finished all the chores. By method chaining then methods, it's a lot easier to write than nesting callbacks. Now, sometimes with asynchronous functions, depending on the task, the task may fail. Let's say we're trying to locate a resource, a file. If we can't locate that file and we're using promises, we don't want to resolve that promise because we couldn't locate that file. Instead, we want to reject. That's what happens when an asynchronous function fails to do something when inside a promise. So let's change our functions around. Within set timeout, let's create a variable const dog walked. Did we accomplish this? This will be true or false. We'll use an if statement. If dog walked, then we will resolve it if we walked the dog. Else, we will reject. We'll pass in a different value. You didn't walk the dog. Okay, let's do this with the other functions. 
let's create a constant of kitchen cleaned equals true. If our kitchen is cleaned, if that is true, we will resolve this promise. You clean the kitchen. Else, let's reject. Pass along this message. You didn't clean the kitchen. And lastly, take out trash. Const trash taken out. Let's set that to be true. If the trash is taken out, resolve the promise. Else, we will reject. You didn't take out the trash. If a promise might reject, there is one more method we need to add to the end of this chain. We need to add a catch method to catch any errors. This will catch any rejects. This is similar to error handling. We'll be provided with one value, an error. Arrow, do this. Let's console.log, or even console.error, the message provided to us with reject. That's what the error is going to be. We'll successfully walk the dog. That will be true. And cleaning the kitchen will be true. But taking the trash out will be false. We weren't able to complete this chore. These are the results. You walk the dog. You clean the kitchen. You didn't take out the trash. How dare you? We'll keep on completing these tasks until we fail at one of them. So if walking the dog was false, that was our first task. This first promise was rejected. We don't even attempt to resolve these other promises. All right, everybody, so those are promises. They're an object that manages asynchronous operations. You can wrap a promise object around some asynchronous code. These promise objects promise to return a value. They will be pending until they complete. Then they'll either be resolved if that task completed successfully, or rejected if it failed for some reason. And well, everybody, those are promises in JavaScript.